In this country, it is important for us to remember that although the struggle may not appear to be a hot struggle, it is a struggle for the minds and it can change to a hot struggle overnight. What many people do not realize about Islam in this part of the world is that Muslims have a long history in the Americas. There is even historical proof. There are Muslim historians and geographers, Al Mas'udi, Ibn Qutiya, Al Idrisi, Al Umari, who spoke about the journeys of Muslims to the Americas before Columbus. That Muslims came to this part of the world and they settled and they actually mixed with the native people. Here in Florida, we know about the Seminole Nation. That the Seminole Nation, from early times, was influenced by Muslims. And it is coming out clearer and clearer that the Iroquois Confederacy, that the Algonquin people, that the Cherokee Nation, that many of the First Nation people actually had contact with Muslims who came from the East, who left the teachings of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, who taught them the last revelation. And this was destroyed in the Spanish period of conquest of conquistadores. What many people also do not understand is that when African people were being brought to the Americas from West Africa and from Central Africa, over 30%, almost one in every three of the African people who were brought to the West were Muslims. Fulani, Hausa, Mandinka, Wolof had come to these shores. And amongst these uh, Muslims, these captured prisoners of war who came to the Americas were, were ulama, were great scholars of Islam. It has come to the surface now writings showing a great slave revolt in Brazil in a place called Bahia. In this area, the Muslims had, had literally captured a section of the country and they were ruling with Sharia. And the Portuguese gave them boats and said, return to Africa. We can't deal with you anymore. Go back. And they returned to West Africa and you can pray in Nigeria right now in a Brazilian masjid. In Suriname, Dutch Guyana, the great revolt was being led by a man named called Arabi. His general was called Zamzam, like the Zamzam water that we drink in Mecca. In Jamaica, in the 1800s, a great revolt came in the Manchester province. The Muslims were passing a document in between themselves in Arabic called al Wathiqa. It called them to resistance. It called them to stand up for their religion. And it is connected with the writings of great West African scholars like Sheikh Uthman Danfodio, Rahimahullah. In America, a number of writings have come to the surface. And we recognize the fact that in the South, especially in Georgia, in the Carolinas, on the coast, that there were many Muslim families. There were prominent scholars. Some of the writings coming out now, one is Umar bin Said, Rahimahullah, who wrote from the Quran. He also wrote a risala, sections of a risala, which is a work of Maliki fiqh. It is a work of jurisprudence. And he traces his lineage, his isnad, his train of transmission back to the great Maliki scholars of West Africa, to North Africa, and right to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Ayyub ibn Sulaiman, another scholar who was captured in, in, and brought to Georgia. Ibrahim Abdurrahman, who was captured and brought to Mississippi, and Amir, a leader of his region. Yaro Mahmud, a Muslim West African who lived to be 120 years old. The oldest man in the recorded records. 70 years he spent in slavery and finally he was released. And so there are many people that we recognize. But the pain of slavery, mother separated from father, you could not read the Arabic language. You could not speak your language. You could not fast in Ramadan. You could not make your salat. 
And so only a memory was left. But by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the descendants of those Muslims are now returning to Islam. And this is not by coincidence. And anybody who comes to this part of the world would, should recognize this is not by chance. This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.